So in the previous chapter, we successfully used uh, access token in our request, right? Now let's see how to use a refresh token to fetch access token in case access token expires automatically without, uh, you know, being logged out, all right? So let's see the diagram, first of all, how to use access and refresh token, all right? And let's see uh, the login flow with only access token, first of all, so to, to better understand. So first of all, let's see why JWT was introduced, all right? So actually, JWT was introduced to, you know, mitigate the problem that was caused by the traditional session-based system, right? So it enables basically more secure authentication for more modern application, all right? So now let's see what is the difference between the access and refresh token. So access token basically is a short time, generally five minutes to 15 minutes up to one hour, but refresh token will last for seven days to 30 days, all right? So an access token is actually used in headers of our API request, like uh, we did here, right? So in headers, we have this access token, but a refresh token is generally used to request new access token in case access token expires, right? So refresh token, if you see here, it's actually uh, the endpoint will be something like this. And this is used to get the access token when it expires, right? And if the access token is expired, we'll use the refresh token to get new access token. But if the refresh token is expired, we'll redirect the user to login pace to get authenticated again. So why were refresh token introduced? Because there already was access token, right? So basically, it was introduced to enhance security and to improve user experience in application that uses access token for authentication, right? Because when access token expires, instead of, you know, redirecting user to login, we'll use refresh token to get access token automatically, right? So that user will not be logged out until and unless refresh token itself expires. So now let's see the diagram to better understand it. First of all, user will send username and password to the server, right? And after that, it'll get access token and client will store that in local storage. And after that, it'll use the access token in header of HTTP request to get the data, right? And in case it is expired, if the access token is expired, we'll get 401 HTTP status and that'll redirect us to login. And we will send username and password again and whole process uh, repeat. But if it is not expired, we'll only in that case, we will get the data. Right, so that is the flow, uh, login flow with only access token. But in case of access and refresh token, uh, the flow is kind of same until access token expires. All right. First of all, a user will send username and password, and after that, we'll get access and refresh token and store that in the client side and use access token to get data from the server. Right. But if access token is expires, we'll get this phone at one. But this time, instead of logging out, we'll use refresh token to get new access token. Right. Uh, so if you see uh, the endpoint of the refresh token, we'll, we'll use this endpoint to get new access token using the refresh token. Right. So and after that, we'll get access token and store it in the client site. Right. So um, and, and after that, we'll get the data, something like that. Right. The flow is like that. And so but in case uh, the refresh token expires, we'll get phone at one again. And only in that case, we'll redirect to login and user will repeat the same process again. So that was all about, uh, you know, uh, the login flow with access token and login flow with access and refresh token. So let's implement that in our code. Now, if you see here, this was the case for using access token only, right? We'll use authorization headers, but in case uh, we are using access and refresh token, we'll need to use interceptors. All right. So let's first make uh, the request interceptors to add access token. So it's actually easy, all right? All we have to do is access instance dot interceptors dot request and dot use. And that's it. So this is going to be a function and this will take a callback uh, as a first argument, right? And error as a second argument. Now this is also going to be a function, all right? So in case of error, we'll just, uh, you know, reset the promise, something like that. And in case there's no error, what we'll do is, first of all, we'll get the access token from local stores. So let's make it token uh, and local stores dot get item access token. And if there is token, we'll just, uh, you know, uh, set the access token in our header, something like that. Access token dot defaults dot headers. And we'll just put the, uh, you know, access token in that header, right? So we are done with the request interceptors. Now let's add uh, interceptor for response uh, to refresh uh, the access token in case it expires. 
So axis instance dot interceptors dot this time response dot use and this will take a uh, true argument. First one will be an empty function, something like that. And the second one will be a function for error. So let's make a function first of all. And after that, let's add error as an argument. And in our first uh, function, we'll just uh, return the response. So let's catch the response here and let's return the response as it is. Because we only need to uh, use the refresh token in case we get error. That's why we are working in this function. All right. Now let's first of all get the original request and we can get the original request from error.config. And now if the error is specific, I mean, if it is unauthorized error or if the error status is 401 and if the request has not been retried, only in that case we'll refresh the token. So if error.response, first of all, this, this should be happy, there should be an error. And if error.response.status is equal, equal, equal 401, 401 and and uh, the original request dot underscore retry is false that mean original request has not been retried only in that case we'll refresh the token so if we look at the diagram uh, so if, yeah so if we are getting 401 HTTP status this is the only time we are using the refresh token right so let's first of all make this original request dot retry as true because uh, this is where we'll be uh, you know retrying our request now we'll be using uh, the refresh token to get new access tokens so let's uh, try catch let's just try catch for that first of all and in the catch section uh, we'll be getting the error in case there's an error while refreshing the access token right and in case uh, there's an error uh, while refreshing the access token uh, what we do is uh, if you see the flow diagram you know in case uh, there's an error in you know refreshing the token we'll redirect the user to log in right so let's change the reference of the location of window window.location.rev equals login and then we'll simply uh, you know cl uh, clear the tokens as well from the local stores and finally reset the promise and in the try section, we use a refresh token to get new access token. So we'll be using a request here, API request, right? So first of all, we'll retrieve the refresh token that we have in the local stores, right? And after that, what we'll do is we will send API request in that refresh token endpoint to get new access token. So const response equals await. And this time we'll be using axis, right? Axis.post and the endpoint of the refresh token and then refresh token like that and we also have to make this function as async to use await so basically what we are doing here is we are using uh, this uh, refresh token in point uh, which will provide us the access token so you can find the endpoint over here right so this is users and refresh token right so users and refresh token and this will provide us the new access token so now let's retrieve that access token from the response. Const access token equals response.data. Now we will store this access token in two places. One is local stores and another one is header of the access instance. So let's first of all store it in the local stores. So local stores dot set item, access token, and access token. And access instance dot defaults dot headers common authorization calls bare access token. And it is very useful uh, when we provide comments, something like that, so that we can easily understand what's going on, all right? And there are so many ways to add access token uh, in the header of the access instance, but this one uh, is more short. And if you, and if you want more shorter than this one, uh, we have something called original request dot headers, right? So let's use that one. So original request dot headers, and we'll provide the authorization and then provide the access token like that. And finally, what we have to do is uh, retry the original request after we get the access token, right? So return access instance and original request. So we finally did everything uh, that we actually needed, like in flow diagram, right? After access token is expired, we used refresh token to get access token, and then we stored it in the client side. And we again used uh, that access token to uh, retry the original request without getting logged out. And finally, we'll have to do a small thing, and that is resecting the promise if the error is not related with 401. So here in the if section, uh, we'll have to 
wrap it first. And here, after if if section, uh, we'll have to return promise dot reset, something like that. All right. And so let's recap the flow again. So after we get response, uh, in case there's no any error, we'll simply return the response like that. All right. And in in case there's an error. Uh, we'll first of all uh, get the original request from error.config and we'll check the error. If the error uh, response status is found at 1, that means if it is unauthorized, in that case, we'll simply uh, make this retry true and then attempt to refresh token. So we'll get the refresh token from local stores and then hit the API request to get new access token. And after that, we'll store that in the local stores and also set that access token in the header of our access instance here right and after that we'll simply uh you know retry that uh, uh, uh request original request so let's comment over here send the original request again and that's it and in case of error you know we'll simply return the user to the login and also remove all the tokens from the local stores and simply reset the promise and in case the error is not related with phone one in that case also we'll simply re uh, reset the promise and I forgot one small thing over here in the request interceptor. We'll have to use config in this argument. And then also need to return that config after this if plus return config. And also here in getting access token, uh, it should be response to data, the data, like that. And that's it. Let's now add it to our git. So git add all, git commit as m. Let's now add message feature. Login, logout, and access and refresh token implementation. And finally, git push. And in our next chapter, we'll be implementing protected route to protect the pages for the users who are not logged in.